G'day and welcome back to another gas walkthrough. Today we're solving Vanishing Point by Bill Murphy. Hey, that's me! Um, and yeah, uh, I'm stepping in for Philip today. Philip needs the day off. Uh, so I'm going to use the opportunity to talk about my own puzzle for a change. Um, but we are gas, genuinely approachable Sudoku. Uh, we create, set, and solve genuinely approachable Sudoku for you, the person reading this. Um, you can find the link to today's puzzle in the description down below. You will also find hat times. Two hats is for a pretty fast time. One hat is for a very, uh, slightly less pretty, uh, like myself, I guess, uh, hat time. And everyone else gets a dinosaur because we love you all equally. Uh, please do not uh, write in saying that was self-deprecating. I know, but I'm, I'm at peace with it. It's okay. Uh, that being said, let's get into today's puzzle. Um, so, normal Sudoku rules apply. Uh, digits separated by a white dot. Oh, sorry. Normal Sudoku rules apply. So, uh, in each box, each row, and each column, uh, digits must, uh, digits one to nine must appear once each. And digits separated by a white dot, such as those, must be consecutive. Uh, not all dots are given. Now, um, that just means there's no negative constraint. Uh, so, um, I might take a slightly more leisurely path through this puzzle than I normally would if I was racing uh, to solve a Clover one. Um, but, uh, yeah, just talk to you about how I set puzzles. Um, if you want to just skip to the end, you'll, you'll see what the solution looks like. But I really like this one. I'm pretty proud of this one. Um, so I would recommend having a go. Uh, yes, it is named after a Julian Baker song. So, um, how do I set puzzles? Uh, first thing I look for is some sort of motif that makes something interesting happen. So, uh, what you might notice is, uh, quite through the grid, we have a bunch of, uh, four cell squares uh, which are all connected by four dots. Um, these are the intended break-in. I tend to build things um, so that they have some sort of uh, visual appeal and uh, the, the symmetry does help. So um, you might know, so let's talk about this box right here. So uh, if you're new to consecutive dots, uh, one of the things you will also come to notice in time is that uh, with consecutive dots, one half of a dot must always be odd, and because the other one has to be plus one, the other one must be even, or it might be even plus one, making it odd. Um, so that's why all of these given digits are odd, because it's going to start us off real well. So here, uh, one uh, must be consecutive to a two. Now, this two needs to be consecutive to either a one or a three, but I put a three there for you, so we know that's a one. Now, three needs to be consecutive uh, to a four or a two, but this two sees both of those. Technically, I'll put two twos there, so it'll become a little bit more apparent. Uh, so, uh, if you've noticed a dot that I haven't touched yet, I'm coming back to it, I swear. Uh, so, because these two twos need to be uh, rule out these two cells from being two, they must be four. Now, four is consecutive to either three or five. We have a three in the box, so that makes that a five. Now, uh, this, uh, this four up here sees both that cell and that cell. So these have to come down. So that's a two. Now this has to either become, uh, three or four, uh, sorry, three or one, but we reach a problem if it goes to one, uh, because two, one would mean that would have to be a zero, which doesn't fit in Sudoku. So, uh, we'll do three and four. If you're wondering if this grid goes back around the reverse way, it absolutely does. Two, uh, nine must be connected to two eights. Uh, this cell can either be a seven or a nine. So I'm going to put a nine there because we have a seven in the thing. Uh, these two eights rule out these two cells from being eights. They must be six. Uh, these two sixes uh, need to be adjacent to a five or a seven. So that uh, seven is... So that seven uh, is ruled out because of that one there, so this has to be a five. Now, 
This six sees both of these cells, so this cannot be six, it needs to be eight. Now, uh, if this was, if this cell here was a nine, this would go up uh, and become a 10. Unfortunately, Sven Sudoku pad doesn't work like that. So that's not how that goes. That's a seven, that's a six. Now, uh, you may notice that I have these two cells, which I've been able to do the whole time. Um, yeah, the reason why those two are there is this puzzle is unique without it, but one of the considerations that I often have when I'm setting gas is uh, how do I actually make it give you? Um, this puzzle is unique, but it revolves around uh, having to do some kinds of marking there. And I didn't want people to have to fish forever to go find it, so I made it easier for you. You're welcome. Um, so that's a three. And over here, uh, this is a seven. So uh, we can do a little bit of Sudoku right now. Uh, one, that's one over there. Uh, and uh, where is it? Two nines, uh, put a nine in that box. Now, I am sneakily intending to post something really, uh, while I'm taking over from Philip, um, I'm intending to post something very sneaky and a little bit devious and a bit mischievous. Uh, so I'm gonna show you this little technique because you might need it very, very soon. Um, so we know that these four digits need to be consecutive to each other. Uh, so this is six, seven, eight, and nine. But we also, but rather than think about it in terms of like, do I just pencil mark this whole box like that? Think about it as they've got to either go that direction or they've got to go this direction. That's the sequence. So it could either be six, seven, eight, nine, or nine, seven, eight, six. Nine, eight, seven, six. Wow, it, you can tell it's been a day at work. So if I put a, so if it was six, seven, eight, nine, that would break. So here, we know it's gonna go like this, six, seven, eight, nine. Uh, over here, uh, one, two, three, four, but we have a three here, meaning it can't go one, two, three, four that way, so it must go this way, one, two, three, four. Um, now, uh, we've got a little bit of Sudoku to do. Now, this is a six, nine pair in row two. Nine can't go in this cell, so that's a nine and that's six. Uh, five, seven, eight in row one. Seven and eight can't go in this cell, so that's five. Uh, this is seven or eight, but because I have a nine here, I know nine is not consecutive to seven, so that must be eight. Uh, this is five, six, seven. Five goes there, take five out of there. Uh, and yes, the symmetry does go back around the other way. Uh, this is one and four. We have a one here, which tells us how this goes. One and four. Uh, two and three over here mean that that has to be a five. Uh, and this is now two and three down here. One means that that two must go there. Uh, one, two, and six left to place in this box. We have two twos, putting a two there. This is a one, six pair. Uh, four, eight, nine to place in this box. We have two eights, meaning that this must be an eight. Uh, these cells have to be a four and a nine. Um, that one also has to be a one and a six. Uh, one of the things, uh, veterans of the Sudoku scene, oh God, that feels like such a weird sentence to say out loud, uh, may note is sometimes, uh, we have a term called deadly patterns. Uh, now what is a deadly pattern? Uh, well, this is one, six and seven, but this seven, uh, is ruled out of that cell. So, uh, you may notice occasionally in gas something comes up where we need to create a, a resolve a deadly pattern. What is a deadly pattern? Well, with this seven, uh, we have one six and one six going this way. So uh, what a deadly pattern is, is mean this puzzle no longer has a unique solution. So it could either be one and one and six and six, or it could be six and one, six and one, if there were no other clues affecting it. That's why the uh, three white dots are in this puzzle. So uh, this is one, two, five to place on the edge, uh, meaning this is three, four, and nine over here. So three can't go on this cell, so that's a three. This is a four and a nine. Now, uh, remember what we said about parity earlier and white dots? If this is a four, it means I need to place an odd digit uh, in the next one, but 
This cell sees five and this sees three, so this can never be four. It's a nine. These are nine, four. Oi, oi, oi. Nine, four, four, nine. So that's eight and seven, which cleans up this a bit. One, two, five. And similarly, if this is six, uh, it would need to be five and seven. Uh, five and seven see that cell. So we know that that's one, two, and three, which cleans up the rest of this grid for us. Lovely. Uh, so um, this it has been hopefully, I guess, a little bit of an explanation about how I think about puzzles um, and what I'm looking for when I set. Uh, does it look pretty? Is it interesting? Does it have nice patterns? Does it solve well? Um, and does it raise some interesting questions? Uh, anyway, uh, before anyone goes, wow, I don't know how you think about this uh, like this, um, I only got like this through practice. Go out and create stuff, kids. That's, that's how you do it. Um, but anyway, this has been Vanishing Point by me, Bill Murphy. Uh, go listen to Julianne Baker. She's incredible. And uh, I will catch you, shockingly, Later tonight, I'm going to also record a video backlog for Philip to help that man out. He is an angel and uh, needs to be treasured. I will catch you very, very soon. Cheers.